Hi, my name is Ian Furso. Welcome to the VP Toolkit workflow series for Unreal Engine 4.27. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic multi-user setup for end display and in-camera VFX workflows. So first thing you want to do is make sure that your multi-user editing plugin is enabled. Once you enable this, you might have to do a quick restart. Uh, and then we're going to go into project settings multi-user editing uh, and then you're going to want to enable the toolbar button uh, this might also require a restart uh, and then so we're going to i'm actually going to go down here and if you see this little drop down show advanced uh, there's a server port section i'm going to just set this to 50,000. Uh, you can if you're using this locally you should have no issue having your other machines see it with my VM is a little complicated uh, as far as how the VM, the virtual machine uh, talks to the network. So this has been the surefire way that I've found to make sure that, you know, everything is able to reach each other uh, and find, uh, find the server across your network. So once I've done that, uh, port 50,000, uh, multi-user editing is good so we're going to go to UDP messaging and then you can see I've added my IP address of this machine and that's where I'm going to be running the server for right now uh, I've added that to the static endpoint and then I've added the port 50,000 so now this is going to direct all of my other machines on my network or any machine that's using this uh, project which it has to be on the network to this machine, this IP address through that port. So now when we launch a server, uh, once you've restarted your machine, uh, you should have a little browse session icon now. And that's going to pop up this window here. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to launch a multi-user server. So once this fires up, I'm actually going to take the server name here and then I'm going to copy that, control C that, and then I'm going to go over to switchboard, go into my settings, and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to paste that into server name. And then I'm in the last video, we should have disabled all of these. So when I first run end display, I generally like to set up just auto join, enable just auto join. Okay, so once we've told switchboard w what the server name is, and now we're going to create a session. Uh, if you could not create a session, uh, you may want to try hitting save because you need to save uh, before you enter a multi-user session. Uh, so once we're in a multi-user session, I'm going to move some things around here. And you'll see, similar to an output log, you, you get transaction history here. Every time I move something, every time I touch something, uh, it's... It's represented here in this little log. Uh, so what that's doing is it's really just storing these transactions so that from your base project, so from the project that all of these instances of Unreal Engine have opened, it's starting there and then adding these transactions on top of that. So it, it brings it to wherever it is here. So if you hit save and you hit save all here, you're not actually updating the local copy. You're not, uh, these transactions that we've made aren't being translated to my project file uh, because we're, all it's doing is pushing these transactions over to the other machines to make sure that their multi-user session and their, their uh, transactions are up to date. So now I'm going to fire up end display and to note here, uh, you want to make sure that your multi-user session down here is the same as the session that you've created uh, so that it knows what session to log into or else you may create a new session. 
And once that fires up, if you've done everything correctly, uh, you should see a the node zero that we've set up now logged in. And we should be able to make adjustments to our scene live. Once you've got that going and you're like, okay, now we can adjust the scene live. Uh, what, do, what do we do when we want to save it to the local copy and shut down for the day or take a break or just make sure that your work is saved? Because there is some things that are not handled well over multi-user. Some texture editing and things like that, you'll find that you want to do in an editor and then, you know, then make a new multi-user session. So before we exit out of this session on the editor, uh, what you're going to want to do is bring down end display. So we're just going to bring that down because if you have that open, that's going to lock your project file uh, and you won't be able to make changes or update the project file because that version of Unreal Engine is, is running off of it. Now, if you have separate project files for each one of your nodes, say you're using like free file sync and or a program similar to that where you have a base copy of it, which may live on your server, may live on your, uh, your master editor machine. And then it's making a copy of that, an exact copy of that across mul hard drives on multiple machines. Then when you fire up end display, those machines are actually reading off of that, but they think and or end or updated as if they were the master copy. So I'm going to hit leave the current session. And then it's going to ask me, do I want to persist these changes? So basically, do I want to take the changes that I've made in this session to have these changes be reflected in the initial project file? And I'm just going to say yes for now. And then let that do its thing. And then now we're back, back in a regular editor. If we hit save anything, now I'm just going to run one more time. We're going to go right back into it. So I'm going to delete this session just to keep things clean. That's the way I like to run it. If you want to, there's auto clear session. You can set that up, give it a try. Uh, so I'm going to create another session and then I'm going to go back to my switchboard and I'm going to refire up the wall. And you can see that it's back in the session and we should have control over it. And again, when I've made some changes, I can bring down the end display projection and then hit persist changes, save those changes to my local copy. And then, like I said before, I generally like to delete it and then we'll go right back into it. I repeat this process uh, as I set up things. There is other ways to run multi-user. You can set up with source control. It works very well with source control, uh, but this is a simple way that I wanted to show you guys that generally re repeatedly works and shouldn't be too complicated for your first setup. Thank you for watching, and if you've liked this video and would like to see more content, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.